Today we're going to look at another hitch. This hitch, like the clove hitch, is extremely useful in climbing. This is commonly used for belaying, although it can add a tiny twist in the rope over time. So typically when this is used as a belay, it's only done for a short piece of rope, generally 50 feet or less. As many of you probably guessed, this is the Munter hitch, named after Werner Munter, who is a Swiss mountain guide. Uh, we're going to take a look at this in a similar way to the way we started the Munter hitch, or excuse me, the way that we started the clove hitch. I'm going to take one length of rope, this time by the tail is on the right, and the load strand is going to matter somewhat. So if the load is coming from the right hand side, that's going to affect how I'm going to want to make the Munter hitch. The first Munter hitch I'm going to do is an air Munter, similar to the air clove. It's made in the air, it doesn't need to be constructed inside of a carabiner. I take the rope in my right hand and I twist it behind the rope that was in my left hand. So one more time, right behind left. And now the strand that is behind, I'm going to lift it to the front. Okay, Right behind left and lift to the front. And now with a locking carabiner, I clip around both of these strands, make sure not to leave one behind, just like this. Lock the gate down. Okay. We're going to take a look at another way to do the Munter hitch now. This way to do the Munter hitch, it's better to have an anchor that you're working off of. Okay, so we're going to go up to our bolt board here. Okay. Okay, so right now I'm just setting myself up as an anchor so it's a little easier to see what's happening. Can you see okay here, Zim? Mm-hmm. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna do start the same way. So before, I made a twist right behind left and then I raised a loop to the front and then I would clip that in, okay? This time, I'm gonna do half of it and then build the rest on the carabiner. So I'm gonna put the right behind left, clip it into the carabiner, and now I'm gonna pull until the load is snug. In this case, I am snug. And then I'm going to clip that in and lock it down. Now it's unrealistic that I would be the load. It's more realistic that this is how I might establish uh, a Munter hitch to belay, belay a climber down on a pitch. So if someone is coming into this anchor, I could attach the rope to them, make this half twist, clip it into the anchor, pull, clip it in, lock it down, and now I'm ready to lower that person down. Okay. If I want to do the opposite and the person is below me, then what I'm going to do is instead of making the pre-twist, I'm simply going to clip the rope directly into the anchor. And now I'm going to make a twist where my brake strand, so if this is the load, this is the brake strand, the load strand, brake strand is opposite the load strand. So the brake strand is going to overlap and making a loop in the middle. You can almost imagine this like an A, okay? And you can see the brake strand is overlapping just like that. So one more time, no twist. I pop that in, I make a twist like that, and then I roll this one more time, and then I lock it down. Now this hitch is in a position 
to belay inward, okay, or upward. Right? This is commonly used in alpine settings where you're using only a little bit of the rope in service at, at any given time and you're belaying very short pitches, typically 20 to 50 feet, okay? often called short pitching. So those are three really good ways to know how to build the munter for different scenarios. The first was the air munter. The second is the pre-tensioned munter. And the third that we just did with the little loop inside of the A is oftentimes called the window munter. Make sure to practice with both hands so that when you're in actually alpine environment or when you're trying to do rescue, because the munter is going to become very, very useful in rescue scenarios, you know how to do it smoothly and efficiently. Okay, a couple things to keep in mind with the munter hitch is it is going to twist your rope a little bit no matter how you use it. But one thing that you can do to reduce the number of twists in your rope if you're going to be using the munter hitch over a significant amount of rope or frequently is keep the load strand, that's the one that this tongue goes around, and the brake strand, the one that comes out the back side of the hitch, as close together and parallel as possible. So if I'm lowering a load on the left here, on the load strand, I want to keep those two strands parallel. The more away from parallel the load strand gets, the more it's going to twist my rope. That's also one of the reasons that the munter hitch is not an ideal tool to use for rappelling on a rope except in the event of an emergency if you've lost all your belay devices and you don't have another series of carabiners or devices that you can use to create enough friction to repel. Over time, it can kink your ropes up pretty badly.